Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our US resource research launch webinar. Um, thank you so much for giving us your time today. Um, I'm Matt Townend, as many of you know, um, Executive Director of Cavell. Um, and we want to share with you some today some of uh, our research in the US market and what we've been seeing globally. So I'm also joined by Myron Wallace, who we will introduce shortly. Um, a number of you will know what Cavell does, but a quick um, summary of some of the areas that we focus on. Obviously, our main area is we're really passionate about being part of this cloud market. Um, and part of that means we're heavily involved in the associations that help shape the industry and with the providers who, who are, and so, uh, providers, investors, and vendors who are a key part of the industry. Focusing really our efforts in a few areas, which we're going to give you some background on the research, which we're going to go through today, some of our consulting efforts, and indeed some of the professional services areas that we focus on as a, a business. So just a quick update for those who haven't registered on 17th and 18th, we have our big European event, the CloudCom Summit event, and it is free this year to service providers. So make sure you get yourself registered. We've got a really, really exciting lineup there. Um, and then we've got some events going throughout the year. You'll see at the end, I'm being very hopeful that we're in a hybrid state um, in when we do our US event where we can be there physically with you. Um, uh, but obviously, we're, 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 we'll see how that goes. We've also got a very interesting event halfway through the year, like we did last year, um, which we call CloudCom Summit Invest, just focused around investment and, and work, bringing together the investment community and the um, service provider community. So exciting times. Um, the team, you've met before a number of the analysts. Um, Amiron will introduce himself shortly. Um, but we've built a great, um, great team focused on this market space. I just wanted to talk about a bit of the journey we've, we've gone through in terms of the US. I was looking back and in 2017, we had our first ever US consultancy project. So from 2017 through to 2021, we've really been upping our focus on the US market. So 2018, we launched our first US event, which has been very successfully running um, both physically and virtually now for the last three years. In 2019, we did our first enterprise um, research, um, uh, both on the cloud networking market and the cloud comms market um, in the US um, market, um, which was really, really interesting. And, and we that was really timely because it was often just through just before COVID. Um, and in 2020, we, we, re we repeated that research in um, the summer uh, of last year, which was just after kind of the first wave of the COVID pandemic and gave some great insight. And Myron's going to take us few, uh, th through um, some of that as we go through. And I'm pleased to say that what we're, we're talking about now is our latest US cloud comms market report as well. So for the first time, we've done industry-based research on the US market. And kind of why, why we made that decision after we've been doing research for a number of years was a number of our service provider and vendors customers said, can you give us a similar level of insight into the dynamics of the US market as you do um, in Europe and 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 further afield, so um, it was a you know a, a choice for us, and we decided to, to to bring out our first market industry market research, um, which we're going to talk through some of the, um, the the results from now. So it's kind of been a journey for us, starting with the event, starting with the consulting, leading into the enterprise research, and um, leading into um, the industry um, research and. For the first, I think last year I was in the US, I made 12 trips to the US or something like that. Unfortunately, this year it's been zero without, um, our, without the, the, other than our virtual presence. But um, we've still been picking up with the help of my analyst team and my um, consultancy team in, um, in the US. Some of you will have met Elizabeth at different times and Tony, um, Rizal. We've been picking up more and more work um, consulting projects even during this time with that, that local presence. So with that in mind, I wanted to introduce you all to some people you will know, Myron. So Myron has joined us. He's been a long-term friend of Cavell. 
um, and has been, I've known him for a number of years, um, and has come on really to help drive our North American um, uh, presence and has helped a lot putting together the research and the consultancy um, project. So, Myron, um, over to you um, and talk us through some of the findings from research. Thanks, Matt. Hi, everyone. It's uh, good to be here and uh, look forward to uh, when we get back to this normal state after uh, this COVID uh, pandemic and hopefully uh, vaccines will, will get us to the path of uh, getting there. So uh, with that said, um, Matt, I'm going to have you transition over to uh, the, uh, the next slide there. Um, you know, the, the COVID pandemic uh, has changed uh, forever the way we work uh, across all different types of businesses. You know, in 2019, if we look at the stats on the left, you know, versus 2020, you know, there's a, this huge rise in, in remote working opportunities across uh, different businesses. And even companies considering, you know, we, we don't need to be phys physically located in a geographic region and opening up the opportunity for uh, employees, you know, to, to work from afar. Um, you know, the use of, of, of video within the business you know, there, there's a big delta and shift, and this is continuing to rise through 21 as well, where, you know, most of our interactions these days are on some type of video collaboration, whereas in the past, you know, it was more of a, uh, a conference call dial in, uh, and those seem a bit foreign, uh, even to myself, I might say, if I, if I see a dial in, um, my first instinct is, why isn't there a collaboration, like, uh, even though I've been in the business for a number of years. Uh, and, and lastly, to kind of touch on, you know, this, this awareness of Zoom, um, you know, Zoom was, was a known thing, but obviously there was a huge rise because of the educational uh, aspect of Zoom being used uh, for our, our children uh, through this education during the pandemic. So, <clears throat> you know, to, to kind of further paint the story, uh, you know, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic brought many challenges, you know, in the industry. You know, the, the big thing, uh, obviously, was security. 67% uh, of companies uh, struggled with security issues during the pandemic, uh, you know, for example. Uh, you know, the culture aspect of, of management. So how do you support your uh, remote working teams so they feel immersed in the company culture and, and part of the organization? Uh, you lose that proverbial water cooler talk unless you have some type of daily stand up or, or something with your teams. And then, you know, obviously, you know, the, the video is part of that culture movement and understanding, you know, how, how do you leverage these collaboration tools, you know, to better engage your team so they feel part of your organization. Uh, you, you know, number number three, as we have listed here, is, you know, the, the right type of hardware and the right type of tools. Uh, you know, with our enterprise research uh, that was done, 36% uh, of our home workers in the survey did not have reliable access, and 46% and of them did not have, you know, the appropriate hardware. So there was this huge rise, and I think many of you might remember, you know, during the rise of the pandemic, you know, a lot of stores were, were left uh, without inventory for hardware because everyone was, was rushing to buy cameras and speakers and microphones and whatnot, you know, to augment this situation. You know, and probably the most underpinning thing here, you know, that should resonate with the service provider community is, you know, there was lacking capabilities, uh, you know, within the service provider stacks uh, that, you know, need extra functionalities that were not put into their platforms. So in our broader enterprise research, um, you know, these organizations that had these technologies de deployed, you know, were, were faced with, you know, going to acquire new suppliers. And it really boils down, did they acquire the right supplier, you know, to, ser to, to serve and solve those needs in their business? So, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, going into our, our awareness of, of the software, you know, you know, these are the, the usual suspects in the industry. And, you know, there was a, you know, dramatic increase, you know, over, over this period of time, <clears throat> you know, that we have here between 2019 and 2020. So our enterprise research that we did showed 57% of large enterprise organizations utilize Cisco WebEx, while 10% of the SMB market do not. Um, so we believe that, you know, the change in, in WebEx for Broadworks release that's upcoming will give better access to the collab for the SME through the Cisco portfolio. But you know, 80% of large companies said that they're utilizing Teams for some type of communication. 
Um, 22 percent of the businesses in the small business SMB class, you know, do the same as well. Uh, obviously, you know, here in, in this illustration, we have Zoom listed. That's a that's a growing contender. Uh, you know, they've added with one million phone users over the course of 18 months since the launch. So this is becoming an increasing, uh, you know, suspect in the competitor landscape on the UCAS side. You know, obviously, Microsoft Teams. We all we all know who Teams is and and where they play in the market. Um, you know, they're, they're singularly the biggest talking point in the industry uh, and come into almost every conversation at the moment. Um, you know, part of the uh, partner community. You know, are they a competitor? Are they a partner? Uh, regardless, <clears throat> you know, there's there's a strategy that needs to be thought through of, of how you know to integrate and, and leverage the team's portfolio. Um, you know, they're, they're pricing their solution on a per user per month basis. And, and we've, you know, through our research, seen anywhere from 15 to $25, depending upon, you know, the feature inclusions that are that are part of the, the solution set. Uh, and addition to that would be the, you know, around $2 to $5 in, in premium addition to the general cloud comms license. Um, you know, if we talk about, you know, utilization, um, you know, they, they, Microsoft Teams has been growing uh, exponentially with their, you know, million of daily active users, and that, that continues to rise uh, over the course of, of 21 as well. Uh, you know, this is generally offered at the moment uh, by, you know, the larger service providers uh, in, in the market. Uh, we've seen uh, some of the other smaller partners are, are starting to rise with integrations and technology uh, because there's other tools to augment those uh, integrations now. So, you know, the top five improvements uh, that we're, we're, we're seeing, you know, in, in our research across the industry, uh, you know, security obviously uh, is, is the number one, you know, component to this. You know, Zoom, you know, had a badly impacted uh, issue uh, early on during the pandemic uh, and enterprises, you know, uh, augmented that, you know, with, with other security and so did Zoom, uh, thankfully. So, <clears throat> You know, the, the next thing is, you know, the user interfaces are, are still a bit complex uh, to the average user. So how can we simplify the complex in the interfaces that are, are utilized uh, for these technologies? And SMBs are, are, are more focused on the mobile improvements. Uh, a common trend is the mobility, you know, collab. That's important to the business and, and, and important to the SMB segment as well. So, you know, these simplified interfaces are driving, you know, these SMB growth opportunities. Um, Cisco, you know, obviously is, is playing into this as well, you know, with their, uh, their broad works for, for WebEx base that they're, they're working to build at the moment and releasing soon. Um, you know, how, how can Microsoft, uh, you know, be part of this as well, you know, with, with the service providers? Uh, I think there's a mixed opportunity there. Um, you know, the, the last thing is, uh, you know, Relevantly large businesses, uh, the, the trend we've seen, you know, is obviously, you know, the, the larger organizations are going to the Microsoft Teams portfolio. So, you know, big important thing here is, is voice is not dead. You know, voice is still utilized by, you know, many, many individuals and many companies uh, for communication. Um, you know, if, if we, we look at the uh, data here, the U.S. market is heavily weighted towards uh, larger enterprises with, 51% of the U.S. employees working in organizations with more than 500 employees. Uh, compared with Europe markets, this is a, a stark contrast as there is much larger SME in most markets. Uh, you know, due to this demographic split, you know, we see many providers positioning and targeting large enterprises. There is, there is a total available market over 54 million users in the 250 plus employee space based on our research. Um, one current penetration is only 34.9% based on data we have. A large number of these providers are also targeting uh, small businesses. We see a mixture of local and regional providers and larger telcos with more access and bundling access and voice services together to, to kind of fill in these gaps. 
So we have the U.S. penetration versus versus Europe comparison here. Um, you know, the, there's large differences between countries in Europe and Europe as a whole. Uh, the Nordics, Netherlands, and UK have the highest penetration rates and, and strong domestic markets. Other, you know, gra- geographic markets differ uh, greatly based on uh, the biz- business makeup of country. SME in the U.S. is not the same as it is in Europe. Regulation, for example, as well in this segment here, Europe is, is, is not just one market. It's, it's a lot of individualized markets. Um, some of the regulatory oversight in the EU, um, it, it, but, but nothing realistically in place. Uh, and, and the G- GDPR uh, uh, requirements are, are a bit stricter than some of the U.S., um, access availability, uh, for example, U.S. has challenges in the rural markets. Uh, we're all aware of this. You know, the rural markets are underserved and, and under provided to. Uh, in the Europe market, they have the same challenges, uh, and that's holding back market growth in, in these segments. Um, in the competition sector, uh, you know, some of the countries with, um, you know, are, are have much stronger regulatory uh, pressure from the incumbent providers. Uh, the U.S. presence across Europe is, is driving, uh, you know, providers to look at expanding market opportunities. You know, this also is kind of, you know, pointing, you know, strong M&A opportunities in these markets for providers to enter the European uh, landscape. Um, and, and lastly, you know, part of these numbers are the cloud acceptance, you know, that I wanted to highlight as well. Um, you know, some markets are not accepting the cloud services. So, Small businesses may only use a, a few core cloud applications. Uh, you know, we have, you know, the breakdown here across various uh, applications by use. Uh, 55% of large businesses with over 1,000 employees uh, use more than five applications internally in 2019. You know, there's a projection that this will increase to 71% in 2021. Uh, 5% of large businesses, uh, you know, use no cloud services at the moment. Um, the majority of businesses with over 50 employees uh, between two to 14 uh, applications in the SMB segment are less than five apps utilized. Um, what impact does this, you know, have on your business, you know, as a, as a provider and what applications, you know, do we need to integrate with is, is kind of some questions that, you know, we, you know, think are, are relevant and important to consider. Um, you know, e- the ecosystems these customers are utilizing, um, you know, that are not necessarily in- integrated in a portfolio like Salesforce, uh, you know, and other CRMs that are that are emerging. You know, how, how can this be immersed and built into not only the the core UCAS application, but how can this live into uh, other augmented mobile applications in, in the portfolio? Next slide. <laughs> so, you know, the, the macro trends here, you know, there, we've got, you know, six key areas, you know, the impact of COVID-19. Obviously, you know, we've, we, we've had, you know, a rise in growth of, of, of the UCAS portfolio um, and, and services. Uh, but we've also had, you know, some, some from fr- frustration of end users not having access to the right tools uh, in the market. Um, you know, where value is captured. So how do you, how do you leverage, uh, you know, uh, these, you know, needs in the market to your best advantage as a provider and how, you know, what type of strategy do you need going into 21 and beyond in the, in the next five years? Um, that, that, that goes into like our SP strategic focus. So, you know, providers looking for some type of strategic focus, do we go specialized? Do we do, go vertically focused? You know, how best do we serve, you know, other markets because the, the landscape, is changing ever every day in the market. Um, you know, evolution of M&A, uh, you know, what's going on in the market, you know, with providers consolidating to other companies and vendors, you know, how does that play into the broader strategy and portfolio of the business? Uh, our route to market, wanted to touch on, you know, how, how do you get, you know, these services, uh, you know, to market and to customers, uh, you know, that you're, you're serving and understanding the personas in these markets? And then platform dynamics, uh, you know, how do, how do you evaluate and differentiate, uh, you know, the, these areas in, in, in your services and opportunities? So, um, Myron, I think 
Um, that's been very useful. So we've taken you through some of the data there um, from both the enterprise research and the cloud comms uh, uh, research um, from the US. Um, and there's a couple of points I want to sort of talk about where we're helping people already, which you might be interested in. So, um, and, and Mara's touched on a, on, on, on a few of these. So one of the big questions we're having at the moment, if I pick off some of these, is how can I move up the stack or where can I add value, future value going up the value chain? This is a kind of a, a key question as the service provider community play with how they move into it, the IT space. And it's an area that we're working actively on with a couple of the very large clients at the moment on their, their strategy. And I think it's a key question for most providers as they consider the way that IT is purchased, the way IT is sold, the role of the IT channel, and how that is clearly um, clearly impacting um, impacting uh, their business. So um, one of the points that Myron raised just back a couple of slides ago about which stacks should you integrate with. So what you'll have seen was a very different penetration of things like CRM in the US, depending on the size of the company. So lots of people have focused on integrating, for instance, with Salesforce as their key, as one of their key stacks. But if you look at the cloud stack that a small business uses, actually Google or Microsoft Mail is key. Um, and then probably they get a, a payment system, a Sage or a year or a zero or an accounting system. They're the first cloud applications they start to live in, um, often before they think about an advanced CRM. So if you're thinking about your strategy, you have to think very carefully about the IT stacks that your customers are using. And I thought that piece of research is really interesting in the differences. And we see the same in Europe. As you move up, suddenly you see the importance of certain cloud tools growing. And often we sort of fall into this, uh, I guess, this uh, this role that, you know, everybody is a, a knowledge worker in a large enterprise and they all use these cloud services. So we're spending quite a lot of time with people thinking through that. And I think that research is very, very relevant. Um, and linked to that, the other thing we're spending time with people looking at is the issue of channel. Um, because the channel is clearly, clearly evolving as we see that, you know, the marriage of the traditional IT and comms channel. Um, and that is having some pretty big impacts. Um, and, you know, it's been a bit of the Wild West out in the comms channel in the last you know, year, especially in the US, where we've seen, you know, people struggling to differentiate and quite often just reaching for the whole area of price and, you know, uh, and, mar and margin is the only way to communicate. Uh, the only way to compete. I guess we made a very good decision, as a number of you know, about 15 months ago when we brought on a analyst focusing specifically on the Microsoft um, area. Um, and we spend our, 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 a lot of our time talking with service providers and working out um, what the strategy should be. I guess the exciting thing for the service providers is there's lots of cases when I'm talking to my friends in the industry in the US where, you know, you, they can see how they can work and integrate with Microsoft as well as just can, you know, see them as competition. All our recent surveys over the last few years have shown service providers being very threatened by it. But I am seeing some change. I'm also um, I'm also seeing that, you know, where voice is being delivered, which is more and more, often it's the service providers delivering the voice elements into, in, into the Microsoft stack. So there's a good opportunity to integrate. Um, some of you have seen that we've been doing quite a bit of work on M and M A. Um, we we assisted Daba buying um, a business in Europe, um, and we're very active at the moment on on diligence. With we're working to give you an idea of the sort of scale of M and A at the moment. We're working live on four deals right now, um, both in the U S. and Europe, in terms of uh, acquisitions that are going through. Obviously, um, you'll have seen some ac acquisitions very recently in the U S. Momentum buying Altus, um, a number of um, both channel and vendor deals um, going on. Obviously, very um, uh, Alianza um, uh, purchasing earlier, Counterpath earlier in the year was very interesting. Um, so we're seeing lots of lots of activity and, and um, uh, Star to Star um, being bought by Sangoma. 
Um, so lots of activity at the start of the year. As people kind of will look at their strategy and work out what they either need in their product portfolio um, and, and, and what they need to be on that. So um, these are some of the strategic challenges we're working through um, with the service providers and you know, kind of the areas that we're focused on. Um, just as a quick sales pitch on terms of the uh, the 2020 US report that we covered a little bit in the um, some of the key findings um, in the in the presentation. Um, we within that report, we're forecasting the US market. We're looking at the number of end users. We are looking at you know how that splits out in terms of penetration. Which you saw some of that. We're um, looking at uh, at vendor split. So we look at splat platform split within that and give insight to that. We are also splitting out Microsoft Teams users within that. So you can see the growth of Teams with voice and what we expect it to, how we expect it to impact the market, as well as looking at some of the macro trends, which we started to talk about channel, et cetera. So I'd highly recommend it as a good read um, and will you know, help, um, help you. Um, so you know, in terms of buying, if you were interested in buying that, we have some different packages. Um, where it's just maybe you just want to buy buy the report um, or you want to buy the report with analyst support, which we normally recommend where, you know, you can have a session with the, the team um, or you're buying um, an annual subscription where you're getting it, getting um, it for both quarters um, and you're also getting analyst support. So not quite a reasonable price to get in to start working with us and get some real insight into what's going on in the marketplace. So with that, um, don't want to take up all your day, but we um, would love to work with you. Um, see, here are some of the customers that you'll probably know we already work with in different ways. We'd love to look at how we can provide you with insight um, for, through the research, through our consultancy engagements, and obviously through our events. If anybody has any questions they'd, um, they would like to ask us, around um, the research, anything anybody's got, then I'd be more than happy um, uh, to answer them. Ah, so Mika um, asked us a question, I see, um, which the way we look at, um, uh, the way we look at Microsoft now is we split it in three ways, really. So we think about it in terms of Microsoft um, uh, where Oh, actually, Dom's answered it in the. Oh, Dom's also answered it in the in the chat. But I was just about to answer as well. So Dom, for those who don't know, is our director of research. Um, so he's done an answer on that. But we we really split now between Microsoft delivered seats where they're selling calling plans, Microsoft seats where there's a direct routing partner, but isn't really offering uh, the, the the core. Voice technology is still delivered through um, phone system and through the service. And then people who are doing an integration where they are where they are offering the core um, the core capabilities. So I think Dom explained um, probably that in his in his 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 um, right his writing there. But that's how we're kind of viewing it. Um, and um, yeah, so hopefully that answers that question. If anybody has any other questions, feel free to, to drop them down. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the number is higher, but the, the, the response was good. That, that Thank you, Mika. <laughs> it was a good response. Um, I, I think that it's, it's really interesting when we're doing our interviews with service providers, um, uh, it is there's definitely, um, when we look at the Microsoft opportunity, um, a lot of people launch services fairly recently. So in terms of if you look at the major sort of cloud comms providers, um, they um, there's also comments in the stage chat. I'm all over it now. Um, I'm going to I'm going to pick a few of these off now. So and, and um, yeah, so what I was saying was a number of the services were kind of launched at the beginning of the year and the integrations where they were doing the phone system, into, where they were doing their own integrations. So we saw 8x8 Ring and people like that launching. So I think we're starting to see those numbers come through. Um, and we'll, you know, we're expect, I'm sure we'll see that number go up. So um, the question from my good friend, Greg, um, and Myron, feel free as well. What's your thoughts on selling versus online selling versus traditional channels? Well, one of the really interesting things which we didn't show from our enterprise research is um, we look at 
where people look, um, where they look to gain information and how they buy services. And one of the things that comes through really clearly, particularly in the SME, is they go online first and they go to um, they go to things like referral sites. Um, and that's playing more and more a role. So I think the buy certainly when they're choosing um, services, they are definitely looking online first. Um, and, you know, that, that is coming through and that change in the last year has grown, you know, quite a lot. So people, there's definitely that part of the sale is going, um, is going, uh, is being done online. Um, in terms of the people who are then taking people through the wholesaling process, when we did some research, I think it was at the beginning of this year, that was still a reasonably small part of the uh, of the total number of sales by the industry. So I, I seem I'll, I'll, I'll find the number, but I'm seeming to remember sort of in the in the low 10, 15 percent where we were actually selling the whole sales process was was digital. But I definitely think it's an area of growth, particularly in the SMB. Maren, I don't know if you've got any thoughts you want to add on that. No, I, I would I would agree with uh, what you, what you said there, Matt. Okay. Um, yes. Go ahead. I think Mark, Mark posed a question about Zoom's approach, uh, you know, to calling in the competitive position. I think I think Zoom has you know like a, a good approach for the most part, but where it's augmented is it feels still a bit disjointed uh, from from my viewpoint of. of, of the product. Um, there's there's some things that uh, you know they need to round out in their portfolio to fill in you know the integrations. I integrations are so key, as many of you know, with the UCAS portfolio. Uh, you know, having everything built into the stack that's easily consumable, you know, by the enterprise is, is number one and, and probably the key point to make. Uh, E the easier it is to consume, yeah, and the I easier think that's it is a, for the business. I have to employee. say, I have to say, from my perspective, I really didn't believe that Zoom was going to be able to pull through the number of phone users it has. So I must admit, I was slightly surprised that you could make that transition from you know the conferencing into the phone use. But they definitely have achieved that. And I think what our lessons from that may be tying into what Greg was asking in terms of they've made the buying journey fairly easy. And they've also focused on something else that was in our research about the importance of simplicity. So the UI, the, the you know, the, the simplicity of the, of the service and the buying journey. So they do appear, you know, their numbers are very bullish on the phone side and have been a surprise to a number of commentators, including, including myself, if I'm honest. I didn't really think that that was going to happen. Um, so yeah, it's it, it, you know whether there's when there's more complex requirements, as Myron says, you know, rounding out that in, in terms of the integration side and other areas seems to still be an area of of of, of weakness. But one of the things also Myron showed earlier, which is just the awareness of that brand, um, that awareness of that brand certainly helps when you've got 93% of our enterprise respondents aware of that brand when they were you know less than 30 percent were aware a year ago um it just shows you uh the power of the power of the brand i guess um any other questions oh yeah here we go um what is the sme's primary product focus meetings voice collaboration and um will that change yeah well i think again we see a difference from our enterprise research in the sophistication of the users, um, you know, in in terms of customer CX and services like that kicking in as you as you go slightly higher, so there's certainly a simpler um, requirement. But I think some of you know our traditional thoughts are you know that meetings now and collaboration are becoming key also to that to that in that SMB space. Myron, any thoughts from your side on the US market on that? Yeah, I, I would say, um, you know, the, the, the voice collaboration, you know, that whole portfolio blended together is, you know, the, the, the number one focus. I think the, the big thing is that, and I've talked about this a lot with, with many of uh, the attendees that, you know, are, that are here today is, you know, the consumption of the products, it, it still feels a bit disjointed, you know, in these um, products. So how do you uh, simplify the complex of consumption across the product portfolio? 
Uh, and I know I'm kind of repeating myself and I don't mean to, but I think it's a number one point that I've, I've heard over the years that, you know, business deploys something like, you know, Salesforce or some type of other CRM solution. And then they have this UCAS, you know, how can you blend the two together? And then more importantly, how can you get the data out of these systems, you know, to show value, um, you know, because really the, the driving factors, does it save me time? Does it make me money? You know, the, the core principles that are number one top of mind on the business side. Yeah, and I think in the SMB, we're having, I'm having some interesting debates with people at the moment that is the time now to offer, is, it, are the SMBs after the pandemic with the obviously global economic downturn, the US economic downturn, are they going to be looking for more cost effective solutions or can you build more value in other ways? So can you build value with specialized solutions where you integrate up the stack? Can you build value with, collaboration. I think actually collaboration is a little harder to build value. Um, but if you're building value by how you drive customer engagement for them with their customers. Um, so we're certainly seeing, you know, fo some focus on that. So how can I, uh, you know, in, how can I help them sell to their customers is an area that I've been talking about for a while, but I'm certainly seeing come through in propositions now. So I think that's an interesting debate. I keep having debates with people say, isn't now the time that you just offer a really low cost solution and that because of the downturn is going to drive sales where the other people are saying, no, let's look at how we build value into the stack in different ways. I think that's a really interesting debate. But Ian, to your point also, I haven't got it to hand, but we in the enterprise research, we look at the different penetration of those different types of capability and need within the different sizes of the US, companies in the US. Um, so yeah, we could definitely um, definitely give some feedback on that. Okay, any other questions? That's been great. I've got we've had lots of interesting questions. So thank you really much. Thanks very much for your time. Obviously, reach out to us um, uh, to either Myron or, or, or Dom or myself or, or another member of the team. We'd love to. Um, Oh, Mike's last minute, Mike. Mark, last minute, Mike Wilkinson, my pal. Right beyond video meetings growth. What was what other major impact have you seen from the pandemic? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's a really good question, as usual. Um, I mean, one of the things we've clearly seen is the rise of home working um, and the rise of people looking to build solutions. So we've been doing a lot of work on cloud networking, as Mike knows. So one of the things I've definitely seen, um, particularly also by service providers in the US market, is rushing to provide more broad, more broad, rounded services for home workers. Um, so that is definitely a, 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 a thing that we uh, you've all seen probably. But some people were quicker than others, and some people have built thought about the problems of that a lot quicker than others. Um, and you know, I've seen some success there. Um, I think um, also the move to, to to digital. Certain verticals obviously have been affected more than others um, um somebody <laughs> people have said that you know certain industry sectors have gone through the equivalent of five years in, in in like five months in terms of their move in terms of digital um uh in in terms of, of moving towards digital so i think that's definitely there's certain sectors um we are, are which have gone through that and it's certainly a consideration we're hearing more and more is specializing your go-to-market on sectors to help compete and add value and go up the stack is definitely an area that a number of service providers who are maybe you know threatened by some new broad based competition are looking at how that how they do that so i think sectors as a whole is a kind of really really interesting talking point and i mean a good friend of mine i don't know if he's on here actually but he might even be on here but armin um from blue ip the, one of the sector kings of the US market was obviously in hospitality and you would think was down and down and upset by that. But if you have a chat with Armin, he'll tell you about how he's how he's moved or now into into the medical area, building apps, building integrations, working with teams very strongly, actually. Um, and, you know, has moved actually done very well because his ability to understand sectors and to build propositions that add more value. So. Um, I think it's a really, really interesting point. Um, so 
with that, um, I will say thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Myron. Uh, Myron's new to the team, so this is his debut, um, that, which was great. Um, great. Uh, so thanks very much. And um, please reach out to us. Um, we'll do some follow-up on, on these sessions. Um, we'd love to talk to you more about the research we're doing in the US, the consultant we're, we're doing, and as we expand, hopefully we can partner together. Thank you very much. Thank you.